Okay, so if you have a slow internet connection, what's going on? So say you do a speed check. And this is the one I like to use. Why? Because it's the first one and I don't have to look any further. So say you do a speed check and because your internet's running real slow, real acting really stupid, you run this guy and you realize, well, it's pretty much exactly what it's supposed to be. Like, that's what I'm paying for. It's actually more than I'm paying for. Well, thank you. So my speed is what it should be. Why am I acting slow and stupid? What is wrong? So your next possible thing you want to look at is, is if you're suffering from... Just stop. Just stop. You're embarrassing yourself at this point. And there's many things that could be going on, but I'm saying, okay, you did a speed test. What's your next quick step? Your next quick step is to find out if you got some packet loss going on. What is a packet? A packet is a segment of data sent from one computer or device to another over a network. And so, yeah. Basically, your packet's the information. If, you're, if you don't know what we're talking about, packets just basically figure it like your information in chunks. So, if you're, say, losing chunks, it's called packet lost. Packet loss occurs when one or more packets of data traveling across a computer network fails to reach its destination. Oh, no. Here's the thing. You can go online and you can type in packet loss test. And you can kind of find these things. But I don't like them. In the reason is, is because I have found that ones that I know were having packet loss. I had a line situation. The line was cut. Problems were bad. And I could still do these stupid tests. And they're still telling me I'm running 100% when I know for a fact that there was packet loss. Even had a, a tech person here saying, yeah, you have a lot of packet loss, that's the problem, the line needs to be fixed, and blah, blah, blah. And meanwhile, these type of tests are saying, no, it's perfectly fine. So I don't trust these tests, that's number one. Number two, you could find a problem where your, fire, uh, your firewall is not gonna let this kind of a test run. I found that on a couple computers. It says, uh, Windows firewall is not cool with this, and your router's firewall is not cool with what this thing's trying to do. So it just kind of says no. Anyway, you can hunt these types of things and they may tell you something. But the thing is, they're just telling you a percentage and that's it. They're not saying where, they're not saying how bad. And I find that instead of even searching for this kind of stuff, go do this kind of test on your own. Which brings us to how to do a test for packet loss. Um, I don't know what Windows you're running, but find yourself a command prompt, CMD. Uh, find your search thing somewhere. Any Windows, you're going to be able to get to this. Trust me. So even if you're running Windows 95, you can still find CMD. It was actually under accessories back then, no, maybe under system tools. But uh, even Windows 10, just uh, your search thing, write CMD and open up your command prompt. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to test for packet loss. Now, here's a couple things you can do. Am I talking to my router? Do you know your router's IP address? If you don't, uh, look on the router, find your paperwork, things like that, or just do IP config, and that's gonna tell you what your IP address is and your gateway, which right there, that's my router. That's the first thing in line to the world is my router. So if I say ping my router, 192. 168.1.254. It's instantaneous, pretty much. Well, it should be. And four replies, and it says you have four sent, four back, zero loss. Now, you could do something where you say ping, let's say, www.google.commander, and there it is, and four sent, four received, zero loss. But let's say you want to get more information. Well, then you can try something like ping, say, minus T, 192.168.1.254. I'm just doing this to show you a quick response of what you get. And basically what this is going to do is ping over and over and over whatever destination you said. Right now it's my router. And then at some point, press Control-C to stop that nonsense. Okay? Now where we stopped it, it had sent 15, it received 15, there were zero loss. 
So one more time, an example, let's say ping minus T, www.google.com. Now let her go. And it'll just keep going and going and going until you tell it to stop. And you're kind of going to get an average of what's going on, or at least a better percentage. The longer you, longer you let it go, the more you might see if something's happening. So let's say control C, ready, one, two, three. So I let her send 19, 19 were received, zero loss. Side note, if you want to see simple IP addresses, you can add a minus four to any of these commands. So for example, let's say ping minus T minus four, that will turn this to internet protocol four, where you remember you're just simple IP addresses and say Google, oops, dot Google dot com. And now you're just seeing the old school IP addresses. Why is that important? Well, hang on one second until I get there. Now, if you're seeing good stuff there, there's one more command we can do that'll give us even more information, and that's called a path ping. And what that's going to do is that's going to map out where the ping goes, where the little packet of information went, and how the heck many times it bounced all over the place before it reached where we told it to get to. Imagine that if the if your little packet of information goes from us to Google, but it bounces all over a million different times, and some of those places it loses it, so it has to retry. Well, as long as, in these ways, as long as it got to Google, we were okay. We it said everything's good. This way is saying, I want to know where, if anywhere, information's getting lost before it gets to the to the location we wanted to go, before it gets to the destination. It's kind of hard to understand, but try to stick with me. So let's do a path ping. For example, we just did to the router again, as so I can get a real short response. 168.1.254. And we said, just path ping that. Okay? Check out what we get now. From Brian's PC which is my IP address at this moment through the router to the portal. So it, it actually knows, hey, this is where we started, this is where we ended, and it's going to compute the statistics. It's kind of cute. It's actually going to think about it and say a whole lot more information for you on what happened. So that was a very quick and simple, that was a very quick and simple one. Let's show you what happens when we when we go somewhere further. So path ping oops www.google.com. Okay, so we started at me, then we jumped to my router. Now that little signal's going all over the place to get to Google. It's not an instant road, it's not like a straight one line. It has to bounce around a ton of servers. So now it took six different locations where our signal kind of went through a server somewhere to get to Google. And now it's going to compute that information for us. And when it's done, it just immediately will display it. And now we can see at each of those spots what happened. And in this case, it actually does show a tiny bit of loss suddenly occurring at one of these destinations on its way to Google. At times, I like to use the um, Internet Protocol 4 thing where we see the simple IP addresses because see all those numbers and craziness with the 6, Internet Protocol 6 numbers? If you use 4, there's a lot of times it can be easier information to give to maybe a tech support person over the phone. Um, like, let's do it one more time. Path ping. Let's do minus 4, which will make it Internet Protocol 4, and we'll say Google again. And this way, I see what I can get these ideas. Now I see Home Portal, I see Lightspeed, I don't know. But there are shorter numbers and easier to tell somebody if you're trying to like troubleshoot something and saying, hey, even when I path ping Google, every time it gets to so-and-so number, it loses a ton of packets. Something's wrong with your server, not my internet. Okay? And in that 
since it hopped about around a few more times this one only took five this one we went all the way up to 12 well six and then to 12 that's kind of interesting so then it's going to compute for shoot about five minutes i'm going to say don't worry about it so i'm going to hit control c which is going to cancel that whole event up there okay so cls clear the screen off now say you cannot save in uh anything out of here when you're in the command prompt so there's a couple things you can do say we did a path ping and you did a really long one but i'm just going to do to the router real quick just to make this simple and quickly what you could do is create a new text document or anything and you could go into here edit mark allows you to do that edit copy and then you can finally come in here and say paste now you can save that information if you need to attach a file or something to read back on so you have to leave this open you can save it and have that well actually saved because as soon as you close this she's gone the other thing you can do with this is have it save it for you Pref i prefer to navigate to where i want the folder to go ahead of time just because it's easier so if i say cd dot desktop i'm changing the location to desktop so then i can say path ping 192.168.1.2.1 five four do one of these guys and call it a file let's say ping test dot t x t press enter okay see this thing just appeared you can open it it's still computing actually but when it's done it's already in a saved text document right there for you There we go. See if I it kind of re refreshed itself. So you can either copy and paste, or you can say to to save it there for you by just by just using the greater than sign, calling it something like dot text. The reason I say to go to where you want to be is because if you don't, it'll save wherever we are right here. So if you were just on like C drive, it would just save directly to your C drive. And you can navigate it for you, so you can do a path ping dot one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two five four. You can write all the where you want to be. So I could go users Brian desktop new one dot txt, and it will see pop up over there. But you got to tell it where to go. If you don't, it's just going to go to whatever folder you're currently in. So that would be right there. That would be C. And that allows you, though, to have a file or something you can attach to uh, an email to text port or something you can quickly open and read back and say, hey, something's jacked up on my line. So for one more example, I'm going to do path ping. Uh, I'm going to do it in protocol 4. And I'm going to say to path ping youtube.com and you can see how many different hops it takes for the packet of information to get all the way to youtube.com and be confirmed that it was received okay and in this took it in this case it took seven okay now it's actually giving me the information here and again, what this is doing different from those other graph tests, those other little online tests aren't giving you too much. It's giving you a very broad general look at your packet loss. And something like this may narrow down like, hey, there's a problem with my connection or maybe their server is being bogged down somewhere because it's, you know, a, a Sunday night and everyone's on the Internet home that kind of thing that you know especially if you get slowed down where they're throttling your internet speeds which they all claim not to do but yeah so that it gives you more information and it gives you some more leverage if you're telling you know the lady on the phone is saying no your internet is perfectly fine we see no packet loss and you can say no 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 hey 
at 99, 133, 205, 102%, 93% is screwed up. I don't know why that is right there. So it just gives you more information to work with. And even for me, I'm running perfectly fine right now. I've been streaming stuff. I don't see any problem. But it is kind of interesting that at this one point, I seem to be losing a whole ton of information. So if I had a problem that was getting consistent or getting worse, I may kind of maybe save a couple of these. Like I showed you how we copy and save or put it in a file. And just kind of watch this. And if I see every time I'm having any issue, it's at this one location, I call tech support and I'll say, hey, something is wrong. What is going on? I have proof. I have numbers. I can tell you actual statistics on what's going on with my internet connection. And that there pretty much wraps it up. I know this is a lot of technical stuff. I know this got a little bit confusing because it's hard for me to explain it on here. But hopefully that helps somebody.